Hello and welcome to the day ahead. It is Tuesday, May 10th. I'm Andrew Gagan. Well, let's uh, take a look at what happened overnight. Another bloodbath on Wall Street. All three of the majors pummeled. Tech leading the declines, taking the Nasdaq down with it as the S&P 500 closed below the 4,000 level the first time since March last year. Energy plunging with the broader sector down more than 8% tracking a lower move in oil prices. 10 of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500 finishing lower with only the consumer staples group mustering a small gain. Well, mega cap growth names taking the brunt of selling as investors continue to grow more concerned about rising interest rates. The Nasdaq closing at its lowest level since November 2020 with Apple, Tesla and Twitter leading the drags as short seller Hindenburg Research flagged there was a significant risk Elon Musk's $44 billion takeover deal of the company could be repriced lower. Rivian shares plunging more than 20% following a report Ford is expected to unload 8 million shares of the electric truck maker. Yields also surging with the benchmark 10 year hitting its highest level since November 2018 before coming back down to earth. And looking ahead, investors remain edgy and in the brace position for another ugly US consumer price report tomorrow, which may indicate if inflation has already peaked. The market has got the sense this, that they're prepared to push the US into a recession. We're not going to see 40 years of inflation fighting um, success effectively, um, uh, just for Powell to give this all up and be known as, as the next Paul Volcker effectively. And so the market's expecting this to probably show that we are seeing peak inflation. The market's looking for this on a headline basis to go from 8.5% to 8.1% and core inflation to go to 6%. And again, that will mark the top. Now, we're not going to see a collapse in inflation. I think that's really important. We may see it bobble along and it may gravitate a little bit lower from this point. To the bigger picture, risk aversion has pushed the US dollar higher, having reached a 20-year high. As a result, the Aussie dollar continues to fall, dipping below the 70 US cent mark. And the dollar, the US dollar, has risen for five consecutive weeks as US Treasury yields have climbed on expectations the Fed will be more aggressive in tackling inflation. Meanwhile, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic has said the Fed can hold to 50 basis point rate hikes for the next two to three policy meetings and then assess the response of inflation and the economy. And the carnage continues in the crypto complex as investors abandon risk assets, Bitcoin falling around 10% and threatening to break below the $30,000 level, Ethereum off more than 11 at 11% 11 at one point and many of the altcoins suffering even larger falls. Well, here at home, we're set up for a rough trading session on this Tuesday with locally listed stocks not immune from the global sell-off in equities. SPY futures signalling a drop of 1.4% at the open. If the market follows suit today, it could take the S&P ASX 200 below 7,000 points. And investors' concerns about global growth also involve China as strict COVID lockdowns suppress demand for materials such as iron ore. China is the world's biggest iron ore consumer and imported close to 13% less ore in April than it did a year ago. And overnight, the iron ore price losing more than 4% to $131 a tonne, which is likely to put further pressure on the share price of the miners today. U.S. listed shares of Rio and BHP plunging 4.2% and 5.2% respectively in New York. Copper producers will also be in focus with the red metals price falling to its lowest level since mid-December. And once again, weak demand from China and fears of recession elsewhere are factors. The copper price down close to 2% overnight and nickel tumbling more than 6%. Those growth concerns also saw oil prices slump. It's also unclear if the proposed European Commission embargo on Russian oil will eventuate. Brent crude down close to 6% to $105 a barrel. Meanwhile, the gold futures price falling more than 1%. And that is your day ahead. See you again tomorrow.